So the second disciple to give a talk is Masahito, and he's going to tell us about crystal meltings. Please start. Okay, thank you. So, uh, well, first of all, uh, I wasn't planning to give a talk, uh, but there was a some cancellation and at the last minute, and uh, as one of the organizers, I designated myself as a pinch hitter. <laughs> oh, okay. and, uh, so uh, I prepared the slides just yesterday or so, and then, so it was a little bit hard, so it's a little bit not perfect, and somebody pointed out that indeed, uh, that even the date is wrong. <laughs> and you are also using all the logo. Okay. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so also the same. <laughs> Uh, please excuse me for <laughs> appearance. See, so let me begin with the, uh, one, one, one thing, which is that, uh, okay, but it's, it's great that I'm giving this talk because it gives me extra opportunity to think about uh, what I learned from Hiroshi and uh, well, I think I can think of the, so what I learned from Hiroshi and also, uh, yeah, what to, what I'm going to do, etc. And And it, uh, what I can say clearly is that uh, becoming a Hiroshi student was definitely a turning point in my career and also, but also in my life. And that's uh, I'm very pleased to say that. And, and in fact, it's very interesting because uh, the way uh, I became Hiroshi student was not the uh, not, not obvious way, actually. <laughs> and uh, it was through a chain of a chain of unexpected events. And in fact, one of the events was the very establishment of covering IPVU, or pre previously called IPVU. And uh, so this was the pre happy Jerome was talking about. And uh, I really enjoyed the early days of Cabri Epic View where people getting together, get to know each other. And I learned uh, the spirit of collaborative spirit of the Institute and, and, uh, and more, more in general in science in general. And through the, my experience at IPVU in the graduate days. And, uh, and then what I can say is that uh, uh, the fact that I became a university student is one of the best things which happened in my life. And it wasn't obvious, but uh, it, was somehow, it somehow happened. When it happens, somehow it happens. And, uh, uh, and uh, okay, first of all, there are a lot of new opportunities opened up for me. But first of all, even physically, it was completely new because uh, I became a student both at uh, TV and then also at Caltech. So I took a flight uh, from Narita all the way to uh, Pasadena, Los Angeles, and went to Pasadena. And uh, actually, it was my very first experience of coming to the continental US for the first time after living more than 20 years or so. And uh, and uh, so literally the whole new world, there's like sunshine, California, remakes, <laughs> and everything. Every, all sorts of things have to be suddenly uh, together with uh, uh, becoming a Hiroshi student. It was an uh, opening experience. And I didn't see that much of photographs, unfortunately, but uh, this is one of the photographs I took. This is the, uh, the institute uh, where, the, where the building, where the Caltech Theory Group is located, Lones uh, and Lauritsen. And uh, I was assigned uh, uh, a desk, and uh, so this is the desk oh, chair. So uh, this is one of the very few photographs. I remember this is the, in fact, this office is now an interaction area. And uh, there is another desk uh, that is another student Hiroshi Chanyu Park, with whom I wrote a paper subsequently. And uh, so, uh, so with this setup, I, I started uh, well, enjoying the California life. But simultaneously, uh, somehow, some, some, somehow it became very at home at the Caltech Theory Group, and which was led by Hiroshi. I don't know why, but I felt very at home. And in fact, through that experience, I met a lot of, lot of people, uh, some of whom are sitting here. For example, I met Jaewon for the first time, Sakura, and all these great people. And that's how kind of my life trajectory kind of begins to expand. And, uh, and that is a very fascinating experience for me. And, uh, and of course, uh, well, it led to a lot of scientific activities. Uh, also, the, the, oh, okay, so some of it got stuck. So let's see, let me stop sharing and then let me share again. Um, and, uh, oh, okay, so maybe let me ask you. should close it and then. Yeah, close it. Oh, you can it. Uh, let's see, let me see. Why you no, you <laughs> so, um, so let me share it. Um, and uh, yeah, in a scientific or even scientifically, that was a very productive experience for me. And uh, uh, and, and in fact, I was fortunate enough to co-author uh, four papers. Okay, so it's working. Co-author four, four papers together with Hiroshi. And essentially, that was the basis of my PhD thesis, and essentially the whole uh, significant portion of my studies at the graduate school. And uh, and uh, uh, so let's see. So uh, and then one of the papers, the, this is my very first paper with Hiroshi about the crystal meltings and toric carbon manifolds. And this is essentially the topic on which I'm going to talk about. 
and published in the Communication Mathematical Physics. And, uh, and then there is another paper, which I wrote with, uh, together with Hiroshi Oguri, and in fact, that one was my very first uh, physical radio letters. And, uh, and subsequently, we wrote two papers, one of which is in this camera, which I'm coming to uh, later. And, uh, and this is a very exciting experience for me. And uh, so that's the topic what I'm going to talk about. And then, so we're going to explain some of the ingredients we did, and then explain what is the new developments in these days. So let me first begin with the topic of the, uh, the crystal meltings. And, and this has a long history, and uh, well, of course, as a statistical mechanical model, but in the string theory context, it's uh, one of the very first papers was uh, by, by the paper by Andre and Coria and Cameron uh, about the appearance of crystal meltings in the context of topological A model. And, and here, uh, uh, the, the story with myself and Hiroshi is to uh, generalize some of the crystal melting construction to uh, 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 how the territory is currently manageable. So what is the problem? The problem is simple. So you consider some string theory, type 2 string theory, uh, specified in the Cargill 3 fold. And I'm going to say that this one is toric, maybe it has uh, enough torus action. And uh, so, okay, so this is a rather standard setup. And on top of that, we are going to have the difference, so d0, d2, d4, d6, et cetera, lapping uh, holomorphic cycles it's corresponding. So for example, d2 brand after two cycle. So such that they become like a one dimensional, like a point particle. Uh, in the normal of both directions. And then the question is to how count how many BP states they are. And this is one of the most uh, prototypical examples in string theory and uh, supersymmetric gauge series, etc. For example, Tom Ryan and, and uh, Andrew Sturminger, for example, explain the Brockholm microstates by counting BP states. And here, the Caravian is non compact so it's not exactly the usual black hole, but it's, it's some degeneration of that. You can think of that. Anyway, there is a nice BP state counting problem. And, and, and the way to organize the counting is to assign the charges. So there is a charge gamma. And uh, so uh, then maybe how many D2 brains there are, how many D4 brains, uh, how many times the D brain laps. And then for each choice of gamma, there is going to be that number, uh, how, many, how many states there are, how many times that is BP degeneracy. And, uh, and then if you consider uh, the generating function of all these uh, quantities uh, with respect to this uh, form of variable, that, uh, that's the BP expectation function. That's what I write as Z uh, BPS. So, uh, and the math mathematically, these are related to some more the enumerative invariants, such as the, some generalized version of also Thomas invariants. So, there are a lot of fascinating stories and the connection to logical string, J series, and everything. So, uh, is first of all, how to compute this? So, this is a very sharp question. There should be some numbers coming out and precise expressions, and the question is compute that. Now, uh, and then, so this is the question, and, and it's a nice answer. Uh, to this uh, question given by this uh, statistical, statistical mechanical model. Uh, okay, so how does it work? So basically that's a uh, Victorian figure is, is shown here, uh, which is way too complicated. Let me try to explain with a little bit more. So first of all, you will, as I said, you start with a toric cardio 3. And, and the toric cardio 3 has a special property that it's described by some convex polytope. So given a convex polytope, it actually secretly specifies the cardio 3, and then you can ask the question uh, uh, previously about the counting BPS degeneracy on that carabia. And, and the, all the difference uh, wrapped, uh, uh, look like a point like the particles in the non compact direction. So there is some effective theory on the particle. And, uh, and in other words, there is some supersymmetric version of the uh, quantum mechanics. And essentially, the BPS degeneracy I was talking about is like uh, essentially the Euler character of the modular space. But it's a little bit more technically complicated because there might be singularity here, et cetera. You might have to smooth out, et cetera. But morally speaking, it's the BPS degeneracy is the order character of this modular space. And up to that point, it's actually, you, you don't really need the toric cardio 3. But if it's a toric cardio 3, toric, toric means that there are some enough torus action, which means that uh, you can do this computation by equivalent organization. And then essentially, you can just count the fixed points with the, together with the signs. And, and the non trivial combinatorial statement is that the torus fixed points are given by uh, these type of combinatorial structures. And hence, uh, the statement is that if you count these combinatorial structures, it actually counts the DPS states. So that is, the, in a sense, the duality between uh, uh, this DPS state counting problem and statistical mechanical model. And, and that is the uh, problem of the. So, so the, and then, okay, well, okay, then the question is that, okay, you want to reproduce the uh, precise DPS partition function. Then what we're going to do? Well, okay, you need some uh, define some another partition function that crystal, and then the statement that these two are the same. And, and essentially, you just need to count the uh, fixed points. So, okay, how does it work? 
So here itself, it looks awfully complicated. It is awfully complicated. And I get this talk many times, and people get, get lost immediately with this picture, etc. But if you look from very far away, etc., there are actually some kind of four lines, which is here. And it, uh, roughly speaking, it kind of looks like this. And, uh, and then there is a corner, like a top, that the cusp. And the cusp is uh, there's a white, uh, white atom here uh, with a blue dot. That's kind of the top, top of the crystal. And, uh, and uh, so that's uh, like the task here. And then what you want to do is to uh, remove, start removing the atom from the top one by one. And, uh, and then, okay, so there's a combinatorics, so it's complicated, but at least the basic idea is that whenever you try to remove an atom, all the atoms above it should be taken. So it, it's the same as taking the atoms, keep taking the atom from the top. And, and then once you, so this is an example of such a combination. I have taken this one, of course, that's necessary to take it and other subsequent ones. And this is a finite subset. And then once you give a final subset, you can just count how many uh, atoms there are. Like for example, here it's a three different colors. And, uh, and I forgot to say that there are three different colors here because there are three different types of difference. In this particular geometry, uh, it turns out that there are two uh, com no, compact P1s. And uh, so there are two different types of D2 brains. And of course there is a one type of D0 brain. So there are actually three different types of the D brains you can consider. And that corresponds to uh, three different colors here. Uh, so, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, so there are three different colors, and, uh, and that, that's important for the counting. And uh, whenever you count things, uh, you, can, you can try to prepare, in this case, three formal variables, because there are three colors, and then, uh, and then count the number of each of each atoms of each color, and then co construct the generating function. And that is the crystal partition function. And, and then that's, uh, uh, that coincides with the BTS partition function. So this is the uh, grand scheme of how, how, how things work. And of course, this itself is a non-trivial statement, uh, which, we, uh, which we found uh, in, in, uh, in my paper, Hiroshi, in 2008. Okay, so now, now let's see some of so this is the... And uh, so I think this is, a, in a sense, it's a solved problem in the sense that, okay, now it's a pure combinatorics problem, just counting things. So, but then the geometry toric model itself, you, you can principle like this and compute the partition function. But, uh, but the partition function itself takes the form of infinite sum, and you can easily compute it up to some order, etc. But it's not easy to find the generic general pattern. However, uh, it turns out that mathematicians are also interested in this, and uh, in, in fact, uh, there are some papers, for example, by Hiraku, etc. Uh, Hiraku and Kenzaro Nagao, for example, which uh, from which I learned a lot. And uh, but the combinatorial there is in particular a uh, very nice set of papers uh, by uh, by these authors, uh, Barra Stendro and then Ben Young and uh, also Kentaro Nato. And uh, but these people, what what they showed is that this combinatorial counting problem, which is infinite sum, has actually an infinite product form uh, like this. Uh, so it's an infinite product form. Uh, there is a, a tilde here because I neglected the mathematical function, but that itself is an infinite product form. But nevertheless, so anyway, so there is some nice infinite product form, closed expression. So this itself is a combinatorial, rather in interesting uh, statement that the infinite sum can be summed into this nice formula. And, uh, and this looks very so simple. And as a physicist, well, okay, if you're a mathematician, it's proven maybe it's okay, but at least for me, as a physicist, I want to understand it in my own way, not through by combinatorics. And that was the question I had. And, uh, and of course, this is somewhat reminiscent of the many of the structures in topological strings and so on, and then the compact buffer form, etc. And, uh, and in fact, uh, I did talk with the, uh, Cameron when I visited uh, to, uh, to Harvard for the first time, I think in 2009. So that's another example where I begin to uh, expand uh, my experience. And, uh, and, then, and, and then we started uh, collaborating uh, on, on and, and one of our things is to try to explain a little bit more physical way from first principles, how to, how to explain this infinite product form. And, uh, and the idea was simple, basically to use the production to M theory. So here, original setup is start to a string theory with the D0, D2, and then let's suppose that there is no D4, uh, where, where, where there is no uh, compact whole cycle. And, and in this case, you can simply go to M theory, and then D0 is start to cross the prime rule, D2 to M2, and then there is a single D6 frame, which is mapped to top knot, but this is the one center top knot. And, uh, and then which is top logical S1 times R3, and uh, okay, so this is a lift to M theory. And uh, there are uh, 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 earlier work by yeah, Gal Kostermin Jian and also uh, Conrad's paper, or uh, indeed, uh, so Conrad's paper, uh, is the Robert Dijagraf and Eric Ferrite, about uh, what is the setup to uh, by, so here the top knot is, uh, has a radius of this one, 
but you can try to smoothly change the value of the radius. And then, uh, in fact, this picture itself is the, from the I borrowed from the paper of the camera. And uh, and uh, and then so and then if you change the radius smoothly, and then it's mapped to uh, purely. Oh, okay, so this one is looking at uh, purely uh, R four, and uh, and and so and, and then the KK modes uh, which we have here, KK modes here are turned into spins. Uh, in the setup, so we have a spinning uh, spinning M two brains. So we have this is the counting of uh, spinning particles in in five dimensions, and and then uh, because we have only D zero D two, that things are local, mutual local. So we argue that uh, there is a nice point in the modular space where uh, there, there is no force in between, and that explains the infinite product form. So that gives a conceptual explanation of uh, uh, of why there are infinite product form. So this was uh, uh, already a successful story to me. Uh, actually, I had some, still have some questions which lingered on uh, for some time. And that is the question of whether there could be any underlying uh, algebra. So, okay, so okay, so from physics viewpoint, it's be, but with the paper with Kamara and Hiroshi and Mina, we explained this as a basically a bunch of free particles in, if you take closer to the dualities, et cetera. That was the explanation. But I was also working with, uh, in slightly general context, uh, with uh, mathematician Kentaro Nagao. And since he's a mathematician, so we studied the wall crossing phenomena, modular dependence, et cetera. And we formulated writing everything in terms of the root system. And the Champa structure, everything, but there is a root system. And uh, so there is some group like structure appearing. And, uh, and then indeed, uh, if you stare at this, some of the structure, for example, here you have Q1, Qn, but it looks like a, it seems to correspond to imaginary root times the root, simple root or something like that. So this seems to, and then sometimes the power is negative, it means the bosons, and that seems to suggest the structure is super different or something like that. So I, I'm also interested in the question, well, this should be a character of something. Some algebra, and uh, so I don't try to talk with a lot of people, and uh, including the local expert at the uh, company IBMU, uh, George Saito, who is of course uh, have been obsessed with elliptic algebra. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I, he says the elliptic, so, so, <laughs> so okay, maybe it's different, but uh, but, no, but but I was very excited about that. So I talked with Saito, talk with him, but uh, the character structure he has a representation theory, but at least he didn't have the character formula finally. And also, I think there's another local expert, uh, which, who is uh, Michio Jimbo, and he has been working on the quantum droid, et cetera. So I think that should be it. But uh, I was almost, almost convinced, but I couldn't write that paper because uh, the representation theory of this wasn't that much developed. So uh, I was completely lost and I became easy. And, you know, you, have, you, you go to a new place, I went to Princeton and became easy, etc. So I stopped pursuing this at some point, but the questions did remain for me for many, many years. And, and sometimes the lesson is that sometimes you just wait, some good things happen because other people are so good and they, they reverse many things out, uh, even though you feel that you're, you're done. And, uh, and that, that's exactly what happened. Uh, and uh, they're very fortunate for me. Uh, there are some uh, developments about this quantum toroid algebras and uh, degenerate, and its degeneration called the fine young years. By especially by the yeah, especially by the paper of Pei Yin et al. and uh, and Jibo Biwa Mukin, that's a very uh, foundational paper in my opinion. Uh, but they also got us in mass physical physics papers. Uh, and then this context, that was one of the motivation for their study is actually AGT correspondence and it tried to understand it. And uh, and uh, uh, that was one of the motivation, but also another motivation is like a higher spin algebra. So these are uh, algebras do appear in the uh, logistics and also Marcias's duality of higher spin duality topography. So there was some extra motivation and people have studied uh, these algebras. And uh, so that then there are some things being developed and why I was doing other things. And then somehow when I went to Perimeter in 2019, it also happened by sheer coincidence that uh, uh, the Wei Li was visited there. I didn't know about it, but Wei Li happened to be visited there as an eminent hero. And uh, we, we were trying to discuss that uh, we are in the same place and uh, it's cold outside, so we begin to talk. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then I hear that, oh, okay, I realized, I realized so initially what she was talking sounds like a remote to me, but I realized that uh, actually uh, in the question uh, I was interested in of the, what is the algebra uh, there is, was almost answered. And if you take that and generalize a little bit, then you get the final answer. And the final answer I declare, or I claim is to be the quiver Youngian, which is the algebra which I'm going to talk about now. So it's a new paper. And so the previous thing I have been talking about uh, 2008 or so, but 
But now we are fast forward into uh, 2019 and 20. We got the paper at the end of 2020. And uh, also, uh, we, have, we wrote a couple of papers. And I even wrote the short review. So if you want the short one, uh, it's a little bit imprecise, but uh, uh, it's, uh, there is some uh, introductory material too. Uh, so what is the query ambient? So, okay, so well, this set lies on the old problem. I just think to make sure that uh, everybody's on the same page. So previously, this is a structure. So there was a crystal melting counts the DPS states and the geometry, and it also counts the uh, vacuum modular state DPS degeneracy on the vacuum modular space on the quiver quantum mechanics. And quiver quantum mechanics is a four supercharges uh, that's described by quiver data, which specifies the matter content and the superpotential, which specifies the interaction between them. So I wrote that's Q and W. So total currency data is turned into the pair of Q and W. And, and then from each from each of these data, there's going to be a crystal mating as a combinatorial structure emerging. That was the, uh, the structure I, I discussed with Siroshi in the old days. But now uh, there is a newer story, uh, which is the story of the Quiva Yangian. And so given this data of the supersymmetric quantum mechanics, there is a new associate algebra, Quiva Yangian. And, uh, and this is a new infinite dimensional algebra. And the crystal mating we are talking about is a representation, it gives like the representational space of the Quiva Yang. So uh, previously it was a counting numbers, but now we have a representation theory and the crystal melting partition function is the character uh, of this new EPD dimension algebra. So that is the, uh, that is the structure uh, we are discussing now. Uh, so let's, uh, let's try to explain uh, things a little bit more detail. And, uh, and it's, it's a little bit technical, but the detail doesn't matter too much. And, uh, but at least I want to show you what the new algebra itself is. And, uh, um, okay, so what is the input data? But well, input data in some context is toric carrier three, and uh, and it's a way to translate that. If there's a toric carrier three, there is associated fever uh, and the super potential. That's what I said. So and, and there's nice algorithms. That was what I worked on when I was a grad student. Uh, of starting with a toric carrier three, and then there's a pair of fever and super potential, namely which fever uh, quantum mechanics there is, and there is algorithm we draw. For example, for C3, it's just a simple thing. If you take a derivative, it means that Y and Z commute, for example. There are three variables committing with each other, which obviously produces C3. And, uh, and then there are more general versions of that. Uh, and uh, so anyway, the point is that there is some well-defined quiver and the super potential. And uh, in addition to that, I, I want to uh, ass assign some parameters to each of the edges and compatible with this super potential. And in fact, super potential itself, I don't use too much, but except the constraint uh, imposed on this uh, parameter. Here we have three parameters, and you want the condition that the, the sum of super some of the charges that are the, 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 this should sum up to zero. So these are like, like a flavor charges, flavor charges of the right fundamental field, and uh, and or you like the equivalent parameter with this and solar, solar action. Uh, okay, so this is the essentially the all ingredient needed uh, for the definition of the, uh, for the algebra. And uh, so, okay, what is the algebra? Well, algebra is defined by generator relations. So it's extremely explicit. That's what I like about algebra because there are some mathematical definitions, which looks fantastic. Although it's at some, some of the discussion a little bit abstract. So I want to start with the algebra with the specific relations and, uh, and uh, uh, generator relations. And uh, there are three different types of generators, E, F, Psi. And, uh, and these are Psi is like a Cartan generator, like a J3 of the SU2. And uh, there is J plus and J minus of the SU2. It's like a lazy lowering operators. And uh, so, and, and then for here's index A, uh, which means that for each vertex of the quiver, uh, there are uh, different types of uh, different copies of these generators. And, and then, in addition, there is some spectral parameter Z, parameter, formal parameter Z, which is a, we call the spectral parameter. It's like a spectral parameter which appears in integral models. And, and then the meaning of that is that if you expand this with respect to this parameter, there are infinite many generators. So, these are like a fuse in the conform fuse theory. And if you're familiar with OPE, et cetera, it's, uh, it has a similar, very similar structure. And, uh, and then sometimes uh, some of the generators start from the expansion start from zero, but in some of the generators it starts from minus infinity or some finite number if it's a uh, shifted young and so forth. But anyway, then there is some room for grading, uh, which I'm not coming to, but uh, at least some of, the, uh, some of the generators are bosonic, some are fermionic. And uh, so there's some room for specifying that. And, and once we have that, you can write on the algebra in terms of the relations. And uh, it, it's again, looks somewhat like an operator product expansion. And some of the arrows means that they are uh, equal up to some expansion respects to some powers. Uh, and uh, so it's somewhat similar to operator product expansion. And there are these uh, Z2 gradings. So depending on whether things is bosonic or fermionic, there are some plus minus sign, which changes the commutation relations. 
So, uh, and this looks awful, but uh, it's actually, let's see, it's actually some generalization of what people found previously, and it's not that scary as it looks. And, uh, and then, so perhaps the, what I should emphasize is in here, there is one important factor, which is this function, which is bar phi, uh, which is this uh, braiding function. So this braiding factor uh, is some function, it's just a rational function determined from the quiver data. So the rational function, and it has poles and zeros, uh, at the location of defined as dictated by this equivalent parameter. So uh, this is a rational function, and uh, and rational functions appears here, uh, and there are different commutation relations. So E and F, there is some Z2 uh, involution, so it looks similar. And uh, but anyway, this is the relations. Something very concrete. I mean, detail doesn't matter for this uh, for this talk, but uh, uh, I just attempted to show it uh, because this is the uh, extremely crucial result. Now. Okay, so this, what is this crazy thing it is? Well, let's see. Uh, for the simplest case, for the parallel C3, in this case, what is it? Well, it reduces to uh, so-called a fine Yang of GL1, Yang Yang of GL1 hat. And this is the one which was found in the old days by Nikki and Ying Yohara, et cetera. And uh, this was also related to W1 plus infinity and the whose truncation is WN, and that appears in the discussion of the AGT and all these uh, things uh, by Sigma Bacero, for example. And uh, uh, and also also discuss higher spins. And in fact, even in this story itself, is a very rich story and the presentation theory and everything. But that for me, my perspective, just corresponds to some simple Calabria, C3, simplest Calabria. Now, if you go to more general Calabria, for example, this thing, x, y equals z, n, w, n, it, it, it reduces to the Afanian uh, for g, n slash m. So it's a least super algebra. And, uh, and so this GLM slash M represents the, it's, uh, this explains why there is like a group like structure, the algebra type structure. So I, uh, at some point I said that it's a, there, there is some indication that there is some something like a white group, et cetera, is present. And indeed, uh, that was the case. And uh, the underlying algebra in that case is simply the affine young of GL, uh, super algebra GLM slash M. And that explains the, and, and the character of that has the even product form, which I, I showed before. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but, but that's not the end of the story, actually, because uh, I also said that there is infinite product form, but that's not always. Sometimes there are compact four cycles, etc. So in some of the examples I discussed in Roche and Cameron, we have the infinite product form, but we didn't definitely say that it, it has infinite product form always. Uh, because now they have the four brains and uh, and that uh, sometimes oh teaching is happening there. <laughs> sometimes uh, the four brain has uh, a non-trivial uh, yeah non uh, has a non-trivial pairing. It's a D two etc. So we, in that discussion for the infinite product form, we did uh, exclude the uh, four brains. But now if you have the D four brain, something interesting happens. And indeed, in that case, the, we we have the definition of the algebra Yang Yang. But in this case, there is no under real algebra. So it's a Yang Yang of not the real algebra, but the uh, Yang Yang of the quiver. And hence the name Young yeah, Quiver Youngian. Mm. And uh, it's actually very interesting because there are a lot of integral models, but in almost all the discussion of integral models, the under algebra is always uh, uh, associated with some D algebra, like quantum Young Yang, quantum affine, quantum troidal, elliptic version, et cetera. But always you start with the lead algebra and deforming, et cetera. But here it's not like that. You start with the pair of Quiver and potential, and then there is an algebra. So there's something exciting about this uh, uh, case, it's more general toric kind of four. And uh, so this algebra itself, I just uh, presented it from top down. So you might wonder what, where it comes from, but at least there are some ways to find it. Originally, I found it by, uh, actually we started with the crystal representation which I'm coming to, uh, but uh, you can also derive it more systematically by uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics, which I'm not going to touch, but at least the point is that uh, I just presented it, but there is more physics way of deriving it from first principles. But instead of discussing that, let me keep the connection to crystal itself because the crystal melting has been the center of the story. And, uh, and then so the point is that uh, this yang yang, uh, which I defined very abstractly, at least in this talk, does act on the crystals. And, uh, and so these are the three generators I had. And, uh, and then so then it, given the crystal, uh, these three generators act by either removing or adding atoms. So uh, this generator E, it's like a raising operator, and that corresponds to adding one atom to the crystal. So it's like one atom. And, and then the lowering operator F, it simply removes one of the atoms. So it's really like a simply adding or removing atoms. And in general, there are multiple different possibilities for removing or adding atoms. If the 3D atoms is too complicated, here I have a 2D picture. And here, for example, you can add the three different points. So you have to start with, the, you start with in this case, 2D partition, and you, you need to add atoms. 
such that the resulting C is also a 2D partition. And then there are multiple possibilities. So this is an example of uh, the, how to add atoms. And in the 3D structure, it's kind of similar. And, and then there's more structure, which is that there is the spectral parameter, which is the parameter here. And uh, given the spectral parameter, and if you can add the atom, actually the, the representation knows about it as a pole, as a position of poles of this argument. So whenever you can add, there is a pole. And, uh, and then there are some extra coefficients. But uh, the important thing is that these coefficients are determined by this function bar phi, uh, which was uh, function, the same function as appeared in the uh, definition of the algebra itself. And in particular, that's determined by the quiver data. No question. So I got to look. So, yeah. so is this the case when you don't have default brain? Uh, no, it works in general. It works in general. Yeah. So in that case, do you know what kind of atoms do you need to put something like that? Yes, yes that's right. So, yeah, so it's the thing. And in other words, in other words, for example, there are, for example, default brains in D, and, uh, and then there is a generator. So it's a generator, like, so this represents the vertex of the quiver. Sometimes there are extra vertex because of the default brain charge, and there is extra generator. Okay. Yes, there is extra generator in the algebra. And, and then that generator, Creates the atom with the default range. I see. Thank you. So, from uh, actually at this point, there is not much difference uh, okay. between those or with or without compact force. It's just that that is not associated with the algebra. That's and the only it difference. It doesn't give you a product form, but in, you, you, can, right. you can use this to generate, yes. Yes. write down generating function yes. with yes. the default right. That's right. That's right. So, it's some algebra. So, it's just true that the character is still the same as the crystal partition. But it's just that the character doesn't seem to have a nice infinite product form. I see. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And then, okay. so here, this is the crystal representation. Actually, there is, uh, there is something which I, yeah, well, there is some extra data uh, which I didn't explain. And if you change that, you can construct more general representations. And, and that story is somewhat similar to what you encounter. Uh, for example, in the context of Vira or Obama modules and things like that. So, uh, so okay, what is this function? This is a bit petrified action of the current down generators on the nothing. So no state, no, no atom state. And then, uh, so this one can take a rational form. And in particular, this one might have a poles and zeros. And the pool means that you can create atoms there. So uh, that's a general rule. And uh, for example, if that's a simple pole at z equal to zero, and that means that you can start creating the atom from here. here. And then if you keep taking the atoms there, it creates a tower, which is somewhat similar to the tower in the Virasoro Bama module. And uh, so if you start with the, if you have a pole, you can start the crystal. So this is one crystal. Uh, but, uh, you can also do more complex stuff. For example, you can start creating a, uh, start creating the crystal from here by having a pole, but you can try to put in the zero at some other place. And in that case, it means that it's the growth of the crystal stops there. So you get the crystal like this, where this part is taken out. Or you can have, try to have two poles where uh, you can you start growing the crystal from there, and then sometimes they begin to interfere. And if you want to avoid duplications, you need to have the zeros to compensate for that. And uh, so if you use the, uh, maybe I explained this a little bit too fast, but uh, at least the point is that you can, by using that type of technique, uh, by considering the positive negative superposition of the crystal, you can generate a zoo of zoo of different representation of this algebra, not just one representation. And, and what's the geometrical meaning of this? Well, I don't understand completely, but in some cases, it is true that uh, uh, you can gener create general different representation of the algebra. So we start with the same algebra, essentially the same algebra, and then consider different representation depending on the different shape of the crystal. And, uh, and the geometrical, it means that we are, the count, BPS state counting is different, and that represents the phenomenon of so-called wall crossing. So uh, there is extra data, modular dependence, the uh, BPS degeneracy depends on the modular and then they jump. And this is the picture, I think I'm not even, uh, okay, this is probably from the paper, but this was discussed in the paper by Siraku and uh, Kentaro Nagao, for example, where it, it, it's this particular example, where it's an example of the quadrifold and there's wall crossing. And, and then there you, the crystal shape changes depending on which point in the modular space you do in the counting. Sometimes we can find something infinite dimensional, but in all these cases, there is associated algebra and then there is associated representation. So uh, the wall crossing is, in a sense, the change of the representation of the same article, or essentially the same article. So that is uh, uh, the story we are finding. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, this is what I basically wanted to say. But uh, since I seem to have a little bit more time, I have to attempt to say a little bit more about uh, some extra gen uh, application of this result. And then it's related to another puzzle, which I had when I was a grad student or so. 
And, uh, and that is about uh, gauge beta correspondence. So uh, what is the gauge beta correspondence? Well, so the, the, the statement is that if you start with a 2D 2 comma 2 series, uh, but original on the process paper they didn't necessarily discuss the most general 2D 2 comma 2 series. They were interested in the formation of 4D 4 comma 4, but that's the, that's the story you can take general 2D n equal to 2 comma 2 series. And, and then there is a vacuum equation. And, uh, and the non trivial statement of the gauge beta correspondence is that this vacuum equation is actually the beta as a sequence of some integral model. So that is a very precise statement. And that's a fascinating statement. But actually, when I was a student, when I first heard the statement, I, 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 well, and, and the day one, I became very complex because the trees in the forest, suppose that this works for general uh, 2D 2, 2, 2 series, uh, and then there is no restriction, it comes on deformation of 4, 4, et cetera. Uh, if that's the case, uh, there are super choices, different choices of quivers and super potentials, et cetera, in the definition of the 2, 2, 2 series. Why else, in integral models, it's actually much less constrained. So if you read the integral model literature, uh, there are things like the Youngians of the D algebra, et cetera, but there's, at least there was no nothing, no algebra, no integral type model structure, nice infinite dimensional algebra associated with the quiver. So uh, it seems that there's some discrepancy here. So uh, either this gauge beta correspondent doesn't work at all, or maybe uh, there is a new, there should be new infinite dimensional algebra or a new integral model associated with the quiver itself. It sounds very surprising, but I have no idea what it is. Uh, but I think I can finally come back to this question because I now have the quiver young yet. So it's exactly the algebra associated with the quiver. And then there is a thing. And then once you have the nice metric, nice algebra, you can try to discuss what is the R matrix, what is the beta tensor equation, et cetera. And then finally check if uh, if this gauge beta correspondence works, at least for the cases when the quiver and super potential comes on totally part of the so this is a task uh, I, I assigned myself and uh, together with my collaborators. And, uh, and, and that's what I'm going to talk about in the rest of our time. So, uh, okay, so, okay, so first you need to start uh, uh, describing the integral model. And integral model is typically described as a spin chain. Like if there is a, for example, spin hat representation, you have to prepare it in a chain. And you have to do something similar here. And uh, doing something similar by, so you need a crystal chain of the crystals. And uh, basically, and the lab idea is to start with the crystals and, uh, and then kind of um, put it in the different points when this complex frame uh, for the spectral parameter. This U is a Z in the previous Z, the spectral parameter. And then you can generate, uh, you just put the crystals and, uh, and several different points, and you might expect to get the crystal chain. And, and indeed, there is a way to do that. So, in the way to do that means that if you can construct such tensor product representations. And, and you can use the standard formula in this type of business, like in quantum groups and all that. Uh, there is some, something like a co-product uh, which acts on the generators, and then uh, it maps the algebra into the tensor product of algebra at, at, at the level of the representations. Um, and so, and then you can construct the tensor product representations, et cetera, and you might think that that's the perfect for integral models. But actually, that's not the case. And if I this one itself, first of all, in the young young also, in the, in the young young, a fine young young case, or quiver young young case, it actually doesn't count. It's, it's not unless the algebra uh, uh, morphism is related to once the, uh, uh, the heat of the paper is called the and uh, sorry, for the degree, I guess. But anyway, uh, so uh, let's see. So, but more importantly, if you take this uh, co product and then there is a co product, there is associated R matrix, et cetera, you get some R matrix satisfying the Yambach's equation, but somewhat in a trivial way. Uh, it's namely R matrix is almost like a scale. And, uh, and then that's not the one uh, relevant for this uh, beta under equation. And this is something that's not a surprise for many experts, I think. And, uh, and then what people do, uh, even the, uh, yeah, what many people do is that start with this uh, co product and then try to take, uh, conjugate that by upper triangular uh, matrices. And this is the story of this uh, uh, multiple group of Stephen Emberoff, et cetera. Uh, although in the quiver young case, mathematically, there are a lot of subtleties. Uh, it's not completely clear of what uh, geometrically what happens because there are extra singularities, et cetera. But you can take this answer and start trying to search for uh, the correct co product. And then the question is that then you can, there is all sorts of R matrix, beta answers. And then the question is whether the result of beta that's equation reproduces the vacuum equation or not. And we will obtain two results. The first result is a successful result. And uh, so, when the quiver young reduces to affine young, so affine affinization of the, some P algebra, 
for example, this GRM slash M, which I was talking about before. So these are the cases where there is a new product form. And in those cases, actually the beta integration works and the gauge beta correspondence works. Uh, if you start from our origin. So that, that's what we verify. And so this is an example. And maybe, it, well, depending on the viewpoint, is it surprising or not surprising? But it, the point is that it works. But now uh, there is an extra result, which is that uh, it doesn't seem to work in some cases. So uh, for the fever, young and associated general fever. So these are the cases with compact four cycle where there is no asymptotic real algebra. So this is, in a sense, a really new case. And then uh, in this case, we found some obstruction to finding the uh, R matrix uh, satisfying the Young Bucks equation and the unitarity. And, and such that it is consistent with the gauge beta correspondence. There are a little bit more extra assumptions, uh, some of which are stated in the paper, but it seems that there are some obstructions. So it's either uh, some of the structure, for example, this uh, co product is the conjugate conjugation by upper triangular matrices, etc., which is the standard story in the literature, uh, as in uh, as in Slavic Ungarov story. Okay, maybe perhaps these stories go away for these cases. Or maybe gauge beta doesn't work in this case. Uh, it, well, okay, it, it's still there is still algebra and representation on uh, on the BPS states. It's true, but maybe you can construct a nice crystal chain and then do the gauge beta there. It's a slightly different statement. So, so some of the collaborators says Nakajima works, <laughs> but <laughs> but the gauge beta doesn't work. <laughs> so it, it might be uh, it might be the, yeah the same way. It's so it's the cool. so that's the tentative result we found. So at, at least uh, it seems that there are some subtleties present. In the discussion in general, gauge beta uh, correspondence. So, okay, I guess my time is up. So, uh, let me try to uh, uh, summarize. And, uh, uh, but, okay, so if, uh, this is the picture showing that how it's, uh, it's actually dangerous to try to come to uh, gauge beta correspondence because if you want to discuss the beta under the equation, first have to identify the BPS state algebra. In some cases, this was the quiver angle, but if you start with the more general ones, you don't know what the algebra is. And then from there, you have to start the crystal chain and then R matrix, et cetera. You have to go through all this process. And then even then, it's not trivial whether that matches the vacuum equation. So uh, I think the, at least one of the messages, the gauge beta correspondence itself is uh, actually highly known to be a viewpoint from, a, from my viewpoint. And, uh, and uh, so it, I think it deserves further study. So uh, let me summarize. So, uh, so, uh, so here I follow the uh, hook deck uh, taken by, uh, my, yeah, by Hiroshi and, uh, and, and, and then try to uh, discuss the uh, uh, BPS state algebra. So it's a little bit more uh, better understanding of the BPS state counting problem with crystal melting, which I worked with Hiroshi. And, and then the, the, the basic message is that there is now new infinite algebra, which is like a new kind of integral model type structure. Uh, and then uh, that uh, is under separately under an algebra in the BPS states. And, uh, and then the crystal of BPS, that was the previous story, but now there's another equality that this is the character of some infinite dimensional real algebras. And this acts geometrically on the BPS states and, and associated the, to the fixed point, uh, which is the crystal. And, and I think there are a lot of interesting questions. Well, well, for example, how general this is, if you go to compact trivia, et cetera, that's a very ambitious mm -hmm. one. But, but at least there is a new algebra, for example. So even mathematically, uh, there should be new uh, rooms for uh, doing new representation theory. And I talk with, at least there are some couple of papers. Uh, I talk with some people, and then there are at least one or two papers started, started discussing that, and I expect more to come. And uh, well, another thing I'm interested in is that since I have been working on trying to understand integral models from some 4D Chan Simon theory, et cetera, and the question is how to understand that from that context. And there are a lot of indications that this related with the 5D version of the Chan Simon theory. So, so in the case where it has a partition function infinite product form that's discussed by the paper of Yehau and uh, uh, yeah, one of the postdocs and then the collaborators, uh, but uh, that's restricted to the case with the real algebra. So if you have the general paper young, young, can you explain it from 5D Chan Simon with some defects or things like that? That I think is a big challenge for me. So uh, there are a lot of questions, uh, but I'm really excited and also excited about the fact that what I worked with Hiroshi long ago is actually still con con continuous. And yeah, yeah, I mean, Hiroshi is doing a lot of different things, but at least for me, even just single project has been uh, amazingly successful. And it seems to be there are a lot of things to be discovered in that direction. So, um, so let me take this opportunity to thank Hiroshi for all the support he uh, has given to me and uh, happy birthday. Thank you very Fantastic. Uh, yeah, so well, first of all, thank you for all very generous. <laughs> so, uh, so, so the question is that now that you have identified this algebraic structure, yes. so can you use that to understand the kind of property of spectrum that we do? So, for example, uh, like asymptotic density of state mm -hmm. for, for large number of boxes, and yeah, can you make some statements? Yeah, I mean, 
Tā, jā, ja diet sāk, tas tā kā, jā, nu diet, ja diet, tas kā tas nūs geometrī mērķi. Jā, 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 tas kā tā tā mērķi īsaitīt. Trying to do, in fact, that's one of the two do is, and probably, I think, yeah, I mean, these generators, for example, but one of the ideas, maybe there is a connection to, for example, I mean, camera has a three premium description of the topological vertex, right? So, and then that, that is, uh, there's a w, w algebra here and there, et cetera. And then this one is a kind of a cousin of the W algebra. So, and so it might be that, so this, this acts as a representation in some sort of discrete way, but I expect that if you go to the infinite, uh, yeah, the sort of smooth limit, it will act as a differential operator properly on the surface. So differential operator on the surface satisfying that, and maybe this quantum W1 plus infinity might be used the cross classical W1 plus infinity, or classical quantum Yangian, Cleaver Yangian, things like that. And so and then there's going to be some free program description of each dips on the geometry which appears. And that's, that may or may not be related to what Kamara discussed, for example. So there are a lot of, uh, yeah, I think that's an extremely interesting question. So that's another example where my, yeah, yeah, my proposal is you, it's actually still gives back a lot of uh, questions to think about. I, mean, so I just want to make sure I understand uh, the, in the context of four cycles, okay. what kind of objects are we talking about? So you have D0, D2, yes. and D4, and D6. Yes, sir. So we have answers to D0, D2, and D4 with no D6, or it's always D6? Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, that's also a good question. And uh, yeah, I mean, well, let's see. Yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, well, not, not, not in the complete detail, but the answer is yes. So namely, uh, so uh, for example, uh, let's see. See, here we have a setup with the D6 frame, and then there's algebra. That's what it is. And, and then, but now you can try to go to remove the D6 and go to D4, etc. And that typically corresponds to truncating the algebra and truncate some representations or, uh, by including some extra D frame. So, and uh, so in the, in the non-compact directions. So and this just to make sure, are you saying that uh, in the context of having D6, D4 brains only and D2 and D0, you know the answer how to compute these? Yeah, so is it, free speaking, instead of having a 3D crystal, you get something like a 2D crystals and uh, and this, it's a little bit extra structure, yes. And so that's that's what I mean by reduction and uh, Yes. For example, you, you say that you don't have to the partition function of n equals to four yang result. Uh, well, let's see. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, in fact, there are answers. There are answers to be. Yeah, I think answer is, is yes. I believe so. But indeed, there are several yeah different different results and uh, yeah. And then I I'm not sure if I can compare nicely with that. So that's uh, that's another my to do list. In fact, and uh, yes. Oh, I see that. That's uh, yeah, for, yeah, indeed. I think, of course, uh, there's a yeah, buffer with partition function, and there's also discussion of connection of that to four manifold or something like so, that. So, so you can identify algebra associated to buffer with partition. Yeah, I think uh, that's why I think the answer should be more or less yes. But uh, and uh, because it's this is a kind of gigantic monster, and it contains many things by kind of degenerating that. And I I tend to take the viewpoint that's uh, that's also included here, but. The details, some details are not worked out. So I, I haven't declared victory yet, but uh, that, that's what I believe. At. Well, it would be amazing if that's actually the case, because that's one of the big open problems of understanding how these, how you actually do it in the local case. But but in the context of the P2s, just if you just restrict it to the D0 and D2 brains, mm -hmm. uh, when you have four cycles, uh, that's part of what the story you're talking about. Yes, yes, say. yes. In that context, though, we should have a product formula. So I'm not, I'm a bit confused about. See, Truncation. So it's like a. So this is the full story. We have a D6 frame, etc. We have a 3D crystal. But as we want to reduce the D4, etc. Typically, the, the 3D crystal is reduced to 2D crystal, etc. So the crystal itself is truncated, and uh, and then then you have a better chance of having a nice infinite product form, for example. So this one, just the analog of the usual topological vertex. Yes. That one is a product form. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. That corresponds to what in your language? Oh, well, in this language, so, okay, so for that, in terms of topological politics, you need an extra ingredient, and uh, and that, ex okay, so that's a C, first of all, without the, uh, open, oh, yeah, in the closed case, it's C3, right, so, and then the, in this language, it's a uh, final GL1 or W1 plus infinity. Now, you can include the, uh, the difference, uh, sorry, let's see, so, okay, sorry, no, no, so let me think about, okay, so if you go to the, uh, I was talking about something different, so if you go to the topological string, that reduces to changing the boundary condition of the crystal, so, and then, uh, that uh, correspond to, uh, yeah, that's still the representation of the same algebra. W1 plus infinity of finite zero one. So either when it's when it the, uh, the 3D preposition with different boundary condition, but it is with the boundary condition, you have essentially the same algebra. So in this yeah, so again, just take, for example, O minus three over P2. Yes. And just compute the partition functions of the, of the topological string, which is, can be used. Yes, yes. Topological vertex of yes, the vertex. yes. 
that in your language is what? That that that, 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 that just to make sure I yes, 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 yes. That does have an infinite product. Yeah. Infinite demand generator. Yes, yes, yes. What yes. is that in your language? In which that correspond to uh in so okay, see here I have a crystal, etc. And then but the, the, the typical crystal I was talking with a sharp cusp, that is a different chamber from the topological steam partition function. And then I have to do wall crossing, and that corresponds to start cutting the, the kind of like a cusp of the crystal. So it changes the so so that the, the, there is a section is like a triangle. I perhaps I should draw a picture. So and then then if you go to take the limit where that uh, you keep cutting and you cross the infinite chamber, that's typically the topological string chamber. Oh, so you get the infinite major into that in the limit, you're saying? Yeah, well, okay. So you, you have to take a limit and uh, and uh, well, I don't know whether when you take the limit that uh, that uh, the infinite product form emerges or not. Uh, so oh, I see. But yeah, we know the answer is that it does. Yeah, it should be. Yes, I agree. It should be. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that it's a different chamber. As I say, in some topological yeah chamber, it's like the infinite product form, and here it's less clear because of the wall crossing and things like that. And the other thing is that the, the interpretation of this algebra for corresponding to creation and removal yes. of the atoms and yes. so on. Is actually very interesting from the viewpoint of quantum gravity. Hmm. Uh, namely, there's an interpretation of the crystal melting in terms of uh, summing over quantum gravitational form. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And so you, the operators that you're talking about are creating these local yes, singularities yes. of space yes, yes, yes. and so on. Yes, yes, yes. So interpreting in that language yes. would be extremely interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think it's related to yes. the quantum gravity algebra. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. It's in, indeed it's algebra of quantum gravity in a sense. And then so yeah, in my paper, Hiroshi argued that these atoms are like atoms of space time because you can cook up the space time out of it. So and indeed it's like a yeah, I mean, adding or removing the atom space time and then changing the geometry. So, indeed, yes. it's in the sense. Actually, for the last 10 years, people have understood this kind of things much, much better. Like, for example, in the JP gravity case, mm. they now understand the algebra of observables in quantum gravity. So, so maybe in some situation, you can quantize effective gravity theory on this toric and then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, identify this as like canonical quantization of this. Mm -hmm. So, that's very. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Nice. And the question is maybe. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. It's actually written by Dick Z. If you know the latter. <laughs> Didn't ask how you can do it. Then, then, but the, yeah, the amazing person who did it is Dima Granapa. He's actually amazing. Yeah, he was who was a previous, if you don't know him, he was a previous postdoc here. And he, mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he just listened to left, but he's actually amazing. So he's a rare person who has the combination of uh, this uh, uh, computational type uh, ability and then uh, very sophisticated mathematics. So I really admire him. So, so I really thank him, not just for this picture, but for his uh, whole contribution to the project. And this is with representing projects. Sorry, what? Represent. Let's see. So this represents that there are some difficulties. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so in, in or in general. So because the question when I talk with people, just uh, people seem to take the viewpoint. Okay, gauge beta is well known. It's established, etc. People are interested in extending it or sophisticating it, etc. But I have the impression that a lot of people take it for granted. Um, okay, not everybody, but uh, don't mean to offend anybody. But I have the impression that a lot of people think that it's uh, take for granted, etc. And in fact, for example, uh, in the literature of supersymmetric localization, people take a general uh, Lagrangian theory and localization gets an mm -hmm. equation. People keep calling it better than those equations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but uh, it's not really a question whether there is an indeed different dimensional algebra. And uh, so, uh, there should be that there are a lot of subtle points uh, here and there. So, you should be aware whenever you go through these things. And mm -hmm. so, so what I said is that even for going from here to there for limited example Tori Carvio, that took me 10 years. So, <laughs> so there's still a lot to be going. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, this might be on well. So so you, you mentioned that this for a given a uh, given Calabi you, you get a this Yang Yan is in alpha or like yes in, in sort of, so in the character of the rep, that representation that I'll character for the representation of that algebra give you the crystal. Yes. So that means you have to choose the representation. Yes. So 
can you change the representation to something else with the same algebra? Yes, that's right. So in a sense, the, so that's the X, that means indeed that's a good, so that's extra data in addition to the geometry. Mm -hmm. But the, what I find that geometry it is not just a, it's not the full geometry, but uh, just the convex polyto of itself, right? So that defines the toric cardio. But if you want to do the BPS counting, there is extra data, which is the moduli, right? because the, these uh, these BPS linear do depend on moduli. Right? There is ball crossing, so you have to specify in addition to the toric data. Uh, the pitch chamber in the modular space you're competing in. So it's going to move in into different yes. chamber corresponding to the correct. Yes, that's right. So indeed, different uh, chamber. Wall crossing is like a just changing the representation in this sandwich. Why is it so there is a one to one correspondence? But, but actually, not one to one. Somehow, the representation side is much, much more general. So there are some representations which doesn't seem to correspond to any chamber. And uh, so, yeah, we asked in a paper. Some of our papers, they, could there be any? What is the representation doing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's the question. And we did ask the question, and we have some pictures for funny representations. For example, the 3D partition, for example, it keeps the growth, right? So, but we can try to, uh, I mean, restrict the growth of the crystal to finite size, like M M1 times M2 times M3, like a box. It's still like a box, in box crystal. And then, but there, there is a representation of those with that. And there seems no geometric counterpart. But from this perspective, it seems to be extremely natural. So, but maybe it's like a finite quantum graph, something like I don't know. But uh, yeah, from quantum point viewpoint, it's a very quantum geometry or something like that. And uh, so what, what is what is it? Even geometrical is not completely clear, but also more in the, yeah. Uh, so I think there are some questions uh, to be asked, I think, in, along those lines. So thank you for asking. I think there's some final question. In case, in case you give it to you, can you sort of work backwards um, towards Calabria, uh, yeah. I'm thinking Harvey Wall, like, yeah. Well, let's see if you can go backwards or not. But here, I mean, the restricted setup in a sense, the, the data of the quiver, etc., is uh, encoded. So, in that sense, like technically, I can go back, but probably asking for more conceptual understanding. And uh, yeah, and then so one way to do that is indeed, as, as, as Hiroshi was asking, probably there is a way to reproduce a smooth geometry in this language. And, and maybe that one, yeah. Uh, so if you go, so that's one way to go back to the original geometry. And, uh, and yeah, that's probably one conceptual way of doing that. And uh, yeah, but, uh, but, but there, it's a little bit subtle. For example, we, we, when we go through the, one interesting thing here is that we start with the geometry, but then at least I have to go through the cleaver. And, and one, for example, interesting thing is that the relation between geometry and quiver is not one to one. There are multiple quivers describing the same car VL. They are like a, something like a cluster transformation, things like that. So, or derived the equivalence of quiver representation. There are various different languages for that. But different uh, quivers represent the same geometry. And then there, these are related by duality. And, and then, so that seems, yeah, that should mean that there, that there are different looking algebras, but they are actually the isomorphic. And so there are some interesting statements too. So there are, yeah, I mean, in, in the process of going from one uh, geometry to algebra, there are some, you actually go through some ambiguities, but in, in the end, it doesn't seem to matter. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that subtlety might affect uh, what type of discussion we have. So you your cleaver young and yes. we call it, is it direct to or not? Sorry? Is it direct to do or? what? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but let's see. Uh, the, the statement, well, okay, the, the conjecture we had is that if there are two quiver Youngians uh, whose representation categories are derived equivalent, or in the modular space are the same, and you can think about several, but let's say since you like the derived geometry, derived algebra. So, let's say the two, two quiver and young quiver pairs have the same derived, uh, yeah, same, okay, uh, uh, the representation category feature derived equivalent. Suppose that's the case, and then the conjecture is that uh, two quiver Youngians are isomorphic. That's the conjecture. And uh, I, yeah, I don't know the proof of that statement. I tried to ask some mathematicians to look into that, but it's a very, yeah, extremely sharp statement. Uh, and, uh, but one sort of thing is that uh, sometimes you have to supplement extra relations. So I presented some relations, but you have to supplement that the extra relations, like people call it say relation, et cetera. So it might be that you have to first identify these extra relations, and then only with that, these two might be equivalent arguments. But, but anyway, that's uh, that's the type of things uh, mathematicians know well. So I think it's a well-defined question. There, I have some many many examples of different quivers and possible potentials which should give rise to the same quiver Youngian. So that's but that's a challenge to prove it. 